Hey, what's going on, Table Breakers? Welcome to another episode of 7-1 Blitz. Uh, today is going to be our, the second half of our mock draft, picks 17 through 32. As always, I'm with Doug and DJ. And again, Andrew th- from the Transfer Portal, thank you so much again for joining us for the second week. Appreciate y'all having me. Let's finish off the great mock draft that we started last week. <laughs> Hell yeah. The no trade mock draft that is going to be 100% accurate. Um, <laughs> Here we go. You guys, uh, before I start, um, anyone, anything they got to say? Get off their chest before we get going? Uh, People need to stop freaking out about voluntary workouts. Yes, thank you. God, it's so bad. But outside of that, no, I got nothing. Yeah. Okay. One thing I'll put in, uh, I just like that um deleting your team off instagram is now like step one in the negotiation process like officially um (laughs) other than that all right i guess we're good to go all right so uh today we'll start with pick 17 i think i'm up with the los angeles chargers and this is an interesting one we got a team that missed the playoffs just barely but has a uh what i think is a super bowl caliber quarterback um, they added Khalil Mack in the offseason. They added J.C. Jackson as well. They're going for it. Um, this could be a right tackle. They've cut Brian Bulaga. That experiment kind of failed. But um, I think with what we took last week, um, there isn't really anything at 17 that I would feel is good for the Chargers. So I'm going to go with what I think is another need but also could be best player available. Uh, I'm going to pair um, – Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack with Jordan Davis, defensive tackle out of Georgia. This guy is a freak, and I think on that D-line, they could be something special. Um, I'm not even going to read his numbers because everyone who's heard of his name like knows. Uh, his combine went viral. I mean, um, he was a huge part of that championship team last uh, this past season, and I think that would just be a, a great show to watch uh, with those three on that line. I love the pick. I think that's. I think if Trevor Penning would have fallen down there, that's probably where we gone. But Jordan yeah. Davis seems like the. But, Je, but Jordan Davis is like the number one pick because Jerry Tillery has not really worked out as a defensive tackle there. So, so why not get like the best defensive tackle? So I absolutely love that pick. All right, and uh, the next pick is uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, Gabe um act, uh, chose the had the first pick for them, uh, and he chose Jameis Williams, who uh, huh. That was DJ, you stupid fuck. Yeah, just one of you guys. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, you uh, pick Jamison Williams, who at this point is the best wide, uh, by, best wide receiver um, out of everyone. And um, they they could go in many directions here because um, they did trade out one of the picks because they, you know, trying to get more draft leverage for next for next year. Um, people were like saying like uh, edge rusher, but they made a, a few moves. Um, they brought back Derek Barnett. Uh, Brandon Graham, and they also just signed Hassan Reddick in free agency, who's been who's been an absolute baller. So, like, I'm not really agreeing with that because, like, why put so much leverage into that position when you know we already do so much stuff before the draft even happens? And then their next uh, need is a cornerback, but I really, I mean, like, I'm not saying that the rest of the cornerbacks are, you know, they're still very good, but I think they're in a, I think the Eagles right now are in a position to pick the best player available a player that will change your defense, a player that will change like how they do. And uh, that pick is actually going to be um, Devin Lloyd from Utah. And I'm going with them because um, they, you know, um, they played mostly nickel last year, which meant that they only have like two linebackers on the field. And, you know, and the Eagles are actually have a history of not, of like not even picking linebackers in, the, in like the first round. And uh, their only linebacker that would actually even made some noise last year was because they're white. <clears throat> and uh, he, he, he was solid for them, but like they, they had, they were like in the bottom tier when it comes to running defense. And I feel like this guy can absolutely change the game for them. He can do everything from playing in the middle and stopping the run to even, even playing against tight ends, playing against tight ends and stopping everything in the middle of the field. And he's a type of player where like you can change, like you can change what you do. Like he'll be right in the, right in the middle taking care of everything. So the Eagles are really in a position to take him. So that's my pick for them. Okay. I got nothing. (laughs) I agree. Only name I have is Creed Humphrey. Actually, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) um, so with the saints, um, for me, I, I like this guy. I know we talked about him a little bit last time. 
Um, you know, with the aging Demario Davis there, um, the Saints, who I, I think, should go uh, Nicobe Dean. Um, you know, a linebacker from Georgia. I think it's a good fit. Um, offensively, I, I was thinking maybe Chris, I'll, whatever his name is. I'll Olave. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they got, they're okay. They got Marquez Callaway and Michael Thomas and Kamara still. So I feel like that would just be a luxury pick. And I think there is a more pressing need at linebacker there for them. So yeah, Nicobe Dean's a freak too. So. All right, up next, Pittsburgh, the team that could possibly trade up, but since we're not doing trades, they're going to stick at 20. We know their biggest need. I I hope for all Steelers fans they don't have to watch Mitchell Trubisky because as a Packers fan, I got to watch Bears fans watch that, which was actually kind of funny. <laughs> uh, so you know right. what? I, I believe he's still on board. Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Pit to pit. I mean, that just makes too much sense. I, I will say – I don't do a ton of preseason takes when it comes to college football because I like seeing the entire season. One of my college takes that I will give myself a pat on the back for, I called Kenny Pickett being a, a top quarterback, which if you look at his years before this year, you would call me the dumbest person alive. But <laughs> he really had that breakout season at Pitt. Obviously, he was you know, lucky to have Jordan Addison by his side. But I think he's probably the most accurate quarterback in this class. That's something Pittsburgh's going to like if they do stick at 20 and I mean, come on, he doesn't have to move far. He actually gets to play in the same stadium. Here's actually a fun fact about Kenny Pickett. You know, he's only uh, a year and a day younger than Sam Darnold. Yeah, that's. They're talking about that if he goes to Carolina. And, and Darnold, like, and and, yeah, I mean, fifth year. it's kind of crazy how that ha- happens, though, because like Sam Darnold's going to go in his fifth year and Kenny Pickett, you know, he's getting drafted. So it's just, I think that was like the only criticism is that like, okay, he, he did finally get good until his fifth year. And then like, even though like he has a high ceiling, he probably maybe has like the, but a really high ceiling, but like the lowest floor out of the QBs. But I think I bet, but most likely. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the only other criticism some people have of him are having small hands, which I can understand your concern, but you know, who else had small hands, Joe Burrow. He had, Nine and a chance now. Kenny Pickett had eight and a half, so we've never really seen a guy succeed at a high level with that small of hands. But you know what? We'll see. I I still like what I see out of him. Yeah, I like I like that pick. All right, all right. Uh, New England at twenty one. Doug, you actually took my first choice. Um, I wanted Devin Lloyd for them. Um, but so with that, I'm going to go with. Um, they lost J.C. Jackson in. Free agency and Bill Belichick loves to put emphasis on the corner room um, or the secondary in general. Um, he's made his name off of that. And this screams trade back if you're Belichick because he likes to do that. He likes to accumulate picks. He'll sucker another team into trading up for someone else. Since we're doing no trades, I'm going to take um, Kair Elam, corner from Florida. Uh, I think he's 6'2, so he's on the taller side for a corner. Um, he's had some issues with like some mental issues, uh, you know, with some decisions, but I think Belichick can easily coach that out of him. Um, he's very skilled. He's very patient. He's got good footwork. And I think he fits the Patriots mold as far as physically and with the right coaching, which obviously he will get, I think he can, uh, become a very solid corner for them. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Interesting choice with so many other corners up there still. He's a great athlete as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next, the Green Bay Packers. And now this is interesting because it looks like we have three fans in this room, so going to be fun. So everyone's probably going like, of course, they're probably going to go receiver. They have to go receiver finally. But here's the thing, though. I know the Packers. I know how they think. Doug, don't you dare put this into existence. Don't you (laughs) freaking dare. (laughs) That is why they are going Kenyon Green from Texas A&M. Ooh. Because their line is actually not in a great situation at all. Like they lost Lucas Patrick, a guard. They lost Billy Turner. Right tackle has just been like this swing position for the past couple of years. Ever since they lost Balaga, they had Rick Wagner there. Oh God, I can't even. They have Dennis, Dennis Kelly. Kelly. Yep. Dennis oh my Kelly. gosh, don't like, say that name. 
So it's just, I think it makes sense because uh, he's absolutely versatile. Like he not only is he an amazing guard, but he actually played offensive tackle in 2021. And also Elkin Jenkins, he he tore his ACL last year. So like he's like a piece where like if let's if Elkin Jenkins doesn't come till later in the year, that like he's like a perfect piece and then you could put him at guard you could put him at right tackle and i just it's like a it's and it's kind of like an elkin jenkins like player where he's absolutely versatile can play any position so he's a really packer player and it and it's still a need it makes sense i i mean i know they love offensive line versatility especially after how elton jenkins worked out and if he does come back and then you add Kenyon green to that and he's your right tackle i kind of like where the line stands with bakhtiari jenkins myers and then uh, Kenyon Green, and then you know you could plug Royce Newman in at right guard. But I would I would be okay with that line. Um, I wouldn't mind taking Kenyon Green at all. I would hope maybe that'd be the second pick, and maybe this pick would have been a receiver. But I mean, it's okay. Yeah, I personally like uh, Kenyon Green more as a guard. So even if he did go to that yeah. right guard spot, that still fits yeah. an offensive line need that is massive for the Packers. So hundred percent, I, I, I would still I would still like it. I did say last week the Packers would draft a guard, right? You I did. joke. Okay. It's probably going to be true. It really is. I mean, I I mean I said this last week that they're probably gonna get Kenyon Green, and then this week I draft Kenyon Green. Yeah. I'm not Nostradamus. <laughs> oh, I would love to see social media that day. Or <laughs> just that know. that pick. It's it's gonna be worse than the Jordan Love pick. <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. If it's, you, Matt, you, if it's Matt Corral, I swear to God. Oh, Oh my I, God! Quarterback by committee. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. We're the new quarterback factory. Get rid of Philadelphia. <laughs> All right, guys. So I got Arizona here with the twenty third pick. Um, a big need for them, obviously, is center. Um, so I I'm gonna take Tyler uh, Linderbaum from Iowa. Big dude, big body, athletic. Uh, and it's just, I hate talking about the Cardinals. I'm still not over Hale Murray. So, um, I, I'm not diving into it any more than that. I mean, Iowa yeah. linemen, I mean, they're, there's a yeah. for sure thing as you can get <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say as a Minnesota fan, I like the pick as a non-biased, as an unbiased, as a biased fan. I, I can't like any Iowa player. Fair. <laughs> So uh, now we've got 24 overall and we just went guard center. I'm going to take a guard. So you know what? You know where football games are won? The trenches. Zion Johnson, the versatile interior offense lineman from Boston College. I got a chance to see him down in Alabama for the senior bowl. My gosh, that guy's a hard worker. I mean, he came in as a guard. He obviously got some team saying, hey, we'd like to see you take some reps snapping the ball as a center. He was working after practice, especially the third day of practice. If I remember correctly, he was, he was the last one on the field snapping the football because the second day of practice, he did have a little trouble. Now, granted there was horizontal wind. So that doesn't help when it's your first day playing center and snapping the ball, but it just shows how hard of a worker he is. He's a tough, very strong guard. That's going to have a big impact on some team. And you know what? It's going to help Dallas's offense get back. Zeke hasn't had tremendous numbers last two years. Maybe it helps him get back on track. Just helps that entire Dallas offense get on a track to be consistently winning that NFC East that should be consistently won by somebody at this point. Very valid like points it. all around. I like <laughs> it. All right. 25. Buffalo Bills. <laughs> the most anticipated pick we've gotten to so far. All right. Um, I think it's obvious. Cat's out of the bag. Sam Howell, quarterback. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, no, so this pick, um, they haven't really addressed the position yet, so I have. I almost have to, especially with the current situation. Um, at this position, I am going to go Andrew Booth Jr., corner from Clemson. I'm not going to lie. I almost took him with New England's pick, but I wanted him for the Bills, so that's why I didn't. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I'm going booth. Uh, he also, hang on a second. I have notes. Yeah. I mean, he's a fast, he's a fast corner. He's physical. He's a great tackler as well. Open field tackler. 
Um, I think he's versatile as well. We often see a lot of um, with the Bills, especially after Trey White was out, we saw a lot of of the safeties come into play in man coverage sometimes and kind of playing down. That works if you play Tua every week, but they're going to play a few more um, Zach Wilson above average quarterbacks this yeah, year. So um, they're going to need the corners, um, especially with Trey White out until November maybe. And even then it's like, will he be 100% in game one? Probably not. But I like Booth for them, It you know, I mean, with the start of the season, if they if they don't take a corner here, I think the start of the season is going to be rough in the secondary. You invested a lot in Von Miller. The defensive line looks awesome now. Last year, the issue was the defensive line, and now you're kind of flipping that to the corner room. Um, so it'd be kind of a shame to see that go to hell in a season where you went all in to address everything else. So I think this is a need plus a possible best player available for them, I think. Um, even if Booth is gone and let's say Elam is here, uh, I think that's the pick as well. But yeah, that's where I'm leaning. I, th- it's, I think it's got to be corner. Yeah, I mean, as much as I, I am beating the drum for Brees Hall, I, this is the smartest pick probably out there. Um, you're definitely gonna need uh, him for when Trey until Trey comes back, and then you get him, you know, for those four or five years next to Trey, and then so, Trey's contract is up. Yeah, uh, it's like a nice potentially up. It's like an insurance policy. I don't hate it. I think this is like the, probably the smartest. The, yeah, and he's six pick. feet. I mean, that's you know that's on the taller side for corners. You see corners average anywhere from like five nine sometimes even and to like five eleven. So he's on the taller side. Elam was six two, but uh, he's big as well. And like I said, he's I watched some um, videos of him. He's a great open field tackler as well. He's not afraid to get physical. I was just gonna say he's got twenty. He had thirty seven total tackles last year and twenty six were solo. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, it's like a McDermott type corner, I think. Yeah, and he assisted on eleven other tackles, so he's he's definitely active. He gets the ball carrier, or whoever has the ball. Um, yeah, I like I said, I I like this pick as much as I like Brees Hall. Um, I think I think still think Brees Hall will be there in the second round, anyways, even in the third potentially. So there's plenty of running back draft. We and, don't have to worry. Yeah, and. Um, I mean, and not to say one guy will end up exactly like the other, but the last Clemson corner taken in the first, A.J. Terrell um, to Atlanta. I know Atlanta kind of sucks, so it's kind of overshadowed, but uh, he's a very good player as well, so Clemson might know what they're doing at that position. Yeah, and I, I like you, I've watched videos on Booth. I've seen stuff he's done, and he just jumps out. I mean, he, he, he looks like he's legit, so – yeah, super athletic. He's only six feet, but you think he he plays longer than that. He's got yeah. more length mm-hmm. than you would assume for a guy that's six foot. Great ball skills. Yeah, this would be a great pick. You saw him line up a decent amount in the slot uh, at Clemson. So I, I don't know if he would stay there or if he would try and go outside. But they said uh, like yeah. long ball speed was kind of an issue. But um, yeah, I mean, slot yeah. I think is where he succeeds. But I'm sure it's yeah. coachable. Yeah, and yeah, great. Do, do you see long ball being an issue if the front four can get pressure like they're supposed to? No, and great I also point. think when you do have a safety tandem that is as good as Buffalo's, yes. you some of that is made up for. I mean, yeah. it's tough for me to think of a safety tandem better than Buffalo's. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that would be a stellar pick. Him or Elama 25 would be very good for Buffalo. DJ, you approve? Yeah, I like it. I like, if I was picking a corner, this is probably who I'd want. I I prefer him over Sauce. I know that sounds stupid and crazy, Whoa. but Whoa. I would prefer Booth over Sauce. Jesus. Versatility wise, or uh, just or just fit, fit, fit wise. Plus, he actually played. I mean, plus he played in a better conference, like yeah, football wise. I, I so. do. I I think I do think that he's going to be end up being better than Sauce wherever he goes. Both claimed. The Bills would be a good fit for him. Well, yeah, and also if he's like obviously not in the beginning, he wouldn't be. But if he's the number two to Trey, as opposed to just being New York, the Jets number one, just on an island by himself, that does help. Yeah. Wait, can, one last thing about him. Do we think can we he'll still say that like he's still going to one of the best situations? Because yeah, like the room's kind of there's a lot of uncertainty with it right now. But McDermott, McDermott, and the personnel have proven to be like where oh, DB, DBs just excel no matter what. Oh, I mean, great, great. Like, Trey, was, Trey was picked 27. I mean, look at him. 
And we moved down, what, twice in that draft for him? Yeah. I think for Trey. Yeah, I, I think th- the, the room is good there. I mean, he's going to get help from Trey. He's going to get help developing from even Taron Johnson. You know, there's those guys that are good role guys. Oh, he's Dane Jackson's guy. underrated as well. Dane Jackson, you know, they'll be they'll, they'll coach him up. He'll he'll be good. I think it would be a perfect fit for him. That's why I keeps. That's why I think that he end up will be will end up being better than Sauce in the long also, run. Also, another last thing about this, um, we talked about how in the Chiefs game, uh, not getting to Mahomes by just like a split second was huge. That's why they went out and got Von Miller right at the same time. They finally saw oh. Without Trey, look at Tyre. I know Tyree kills in Miami now, but look what they did in 13 seconds. Like, you can't, I know, like getting undrafted or late round guys and turning them into something like they did with Levi and or doing with Dane Jackson. And, you know, they, you know, have Teron Johnson in the nickel, but you need talent when it gets to those games. You just do, especially when you're, you know, you're going to play a loaded AFC with quarterbacks. You need help in the secondary. 100%. All right. Now let's get to the next pick, unfortunately. Uh, the Tennessee Titans. And now they're they're in a very interesting situation where, like, they they need help with their offensive line. Like, their, like their defense really wasn't – like, well, their secondary really wasn't that great. They saw Beard and then Fulton and, um, and uh, Farley. Like, they're still developing. And uh, I'm actually going to go with a pretty interesting pick here. I'm going to go with uh, Brooks from Arkansas. Ooh, because yeah, they just got Robert Woods, but he's coming off an ACL injury and ate this whole AJ Brown situation. That'll get resolved. Will it? Yeah. Come on. The, the stuff that he's doing, like taking Tennessee out of his social media bio, 1000%. He did not do that. His agent told him to do it so he could have leverage to get the type of money that Christian Kirk did from Jacksonville. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I they could have gone. I was also thinking of Tyler Smith from Tulsa here as well. But uh, when you but when you look at the room overall, like it's really AJ, it's AJ Brown, it's Robert Woods, and I and beyond that, it, and Julio Jones is gone. So it's so it's it's honestly, I think it could possibly fill a need there. And like honestly, from like from a draft, like from like a draft standpoint, I think this is like one of the pick that kind of makes sense. Where even if that, hey, I mean, A.J. Brown comes back and then boom, you get this nice shiny receiver. Because like Robert Woods, he might not, who knows when he comes back next year. Because he, he he got injured late in the year. So, and plus they want to add as much t- t- talent for Tannehill. So and we really don't know. So I just, so I, you know, I decided to go a little bit risky and go and go that route. It's not impossible. Yeah. I mean, like, it's okay, it's, it's another pick for, you know, it's good. Plus, like, he's not just a long guy. Like, sc- like, he can do screens. He can do – he's physical. I think it's I think it's a good fit. I will say, like, with him and if A.J. Brown does eventually come back, you would have two very physical, pretty big-bodied receivers. It'd be, yeah. it'd be hard for some, uh, some secondaries to keep up with that. Yeah. And he's a good run blocker. And we know that's an important thing in Tennessee. Yeah. For sure. All right. So what? I got Tampa. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. I lost my board. Hang on. I think this guy might have already unpicked. Oh, no. He wasn't. Okay. All right. So for Tampa uh, with 27, uh, Bernard Raymond, uh, tackle from Central Michigan. Um, They lost a couple guys, right? The guy retired. They another guy left in free agency. Yeah, Capo went to Cincinnati. Okay, yeah. so yeah, this guy is big, six six, three hundred pounds. Um, he you know he didn't allow a sack in the final six games of the year. Just a big fat ass <laughs> that Tom Brady needs to help protect. You can't you, you can't tackle Tom Brady anymore. He's too old. Bones will break, crack, whatever. So they need to replace some holes on the offensive line, uh, and this guy's, you know, a, uh, a monster, big dude. You don't fuck with someone that's six six. So. All right, am I am I taking Green Bay twenty eight right now? Yep. All right, please, Andrew, please. So I, I had a plan going into this. I had assumed that Green Bay would be taking a receiver at twenty two, and then good job, Doug. I would be like, okay, the receiver's <laughs> taken. Now I can focus on 
I was going to take Jalen Petrie, the safety from Baylor. But now there's no receiver taken. Now, I will say, as a non-biased person, I would love for them to not take a receiver in the first round because social media would be on a tear. As a Packer fan, I would cry. (laughs) But the, the way the board has fallen... This is too good of an opportunity to who not is. take Chris Olave from yep. Ohio State. Yep. If he falls this far, yeah, it would be yeah. – you have to. I think if I think he's there he at 20, 22. I was just going to say, if he's there at 22, it, it's got to be a slam dunk, right? Yeah. Everything worked out. Woohoo! You could argue <laughs> these would be their two picks just in reverse order. You really could. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, Olave, he's got the athleticism you want. He's a solid separator. He's just that guy that can break open that Packers offense. I mean, who on that wide receiver core is really going to contribute, especially downfield? Randall Cobb? No, he's like 34 or 35, however the heck old he is. Uh, Alan Lazard? No, uh, because he's only good on third downs, and he drops the ball a lot, especially later in the season. Sammy Watkins, he's not – the same Sammy Watkins that just came out of Clemson. He just came from Baltimore. And then who else is there? MVS is gone. Devontae is obviously gone. Chris Olave would really be, honestly, that WR1 role. He would. There were apparently rumors out there that, like, like uh, Olave is like Roger's crush. You know what? I've I've seen those two, and you know what? <laughs> I'm sure he would be mad if he wasn't the pick of 22 if he was available. But you know what? It works out. I got a conspiracy. And by conspiracy, <laughs> I mean I did this trade on the PFF mock simulator, and it worked. So I'm going to say that it works. Um, Jordan Love, a second rounder, a third – next year and a fourth this year for McLaurin and pick 11 and then double down and receiver at pick 11. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I it's not going to happen. It wouldn't happen with Washington's pick. It's either Kyle Hamilton. If maybe they really love Stingley and say, yeah. Garrett Wilson. If it's none of those three players, they trade back. I, I I got to talk to Washington reporter John Kime the other day, and that's essentially what he told me. So I'm going from he's telling me information, now I'm saying it. So You have an insider with a Washington reporter. I did a mock draft on my free time. Let's call it even. No, I'm just, just kidding. I'll take your word for <laughs> oh, it 100%. PFF mock, draft. PFF mock draft is a very reliable source. I'll take your word for it 100%. Yeah, to be fair, I've done the PFF mm-hmm. mock draft like 37 times in the last four days, and every time it's fucking different. So, Oh, uh, was it? It was the year Rondell. So last year, I did the PFF mock. There were like three times in a set of five. Rondell Moore was the number one overall pick. <laughs> Wait, really? I, I, yeah. I, I screenshot somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm like, it. that's amazing. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> Christ. Uh, just thinking about that receiver room. Jesus Christ. Anyway, Kansas City, back to back, 29 and 30. So for I, 29. I, I, I think they should trade both those picks for someone to take Brittany Holmes away. No. <laughs> and, I, don't uh, know that, I don't know if that costs two first round picks. I think a fan will do it for free. <laughs> Put Jackson in that deal too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so the biggest thing for the chiefs this off season was they lost Tyree kill, right? They sign MVS, they sign Juju, and Juju, I mean, he's not really a speedster, but he's a pretty good route runner. He's got decent hands, but he's coming off that surgery. And MVS can stretch the field, but he is not Tyree Kill by any means. Um, So I think what the Chiefs are going to try to do is try to replace Tyree Kill by committee, and I think adding this player really helps to that, to put him with MVS and McCole Hardman. Uh, I'm going to go Jahan Dotson, uh, receiver from Penn State. Very fast, uh, great route runner, good hands, uh, kind of small. Um, so corners might be able to get physical with them. But with Patrick Mahomes and, and like the receivers I mentioned, I think they'll be able to have a very spread offense and try to pick up where they left off and try to replace, again, like I said, replace Tyreek Hill with a committee instead of just one person. I yeah. like it. 
one like thing I love about Dotson's against. game is when he is running a deeper route, he's so aware of where he needs to be. He's very aware of where the defenders are, what spaces he can take, and just exploiting them. You saw him do a, a lot of that at Penn State. It was he, he's a really good route runner. There's something not a ton of people talk about. Obviously, he's a deep threat, but his routes at the next level, they are so fun to watch. Wait, Andrew, I actually watched a few of the tapes of, of most of the wide receivers, and uh, would you think that he's like the best route runner or is like more no. of a speed that not- – I, I would say he's the most aware when it comes okay. – he's not, he's not the most like – shifty route runner like when you think of like a keenan allen or a stefan or a Devonte, he is he's good at running his routes because he knows where he can go to put his quarterback in the best situation i would say if you're talking best route runners purely i like sky Moore, uh western michigan obviously you can look at garrett wilson from ohio state even chris olave uh yeah. and even a guy i really love and if the packers took him in the second round i would jump for joy khalil shakir from boise state yeah. How do you feel about uh, George Pickens while we're on the subject of receivers? I, I really like him. I think he's one of those receivers where we have so many good receivers in this class. If he went in the mid to late 20s, I'd be like, yeah, that's still a good pick. Is he mocked there a ton? No, but I would still like it because I think he's a heck of a player. He just – he missed a lot of the season due to the ACL tear he had last March. Right. Wait, one more receiver I want to bring up. Uh, Wandell Robinson from Kentucky. What do you think of him? <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm very hesitant on drafting wide receivers that are that small. I like when they're that shifty, they're fast, but I don't know. I don't know how much I can work with with five, six, five, seven. Then we're talking about like Tariq Cohn uh, level height, and that's that's not something that's very desirable to me. If I'm taking one of those shiftier guys, uh, one guy that I've actually kind of liked is Bo Melton from Rutgers. He also has versatility as a returner, which we know the Packers need. Uh, cause hopefully it's not Amari Rogers cause that was a bad experiment. So I, th- I think you look at Bo Melton from Rutgers, uh, Vellis Jones from Tennessee. Uh, he's not that big either. He's still about five eleven, but he can definitely run the ball as well. I love it. Okay. All right. And on that note, let's go to the next, uh, chiefs pick, um, 30. And I think uh, the clear one is that um, is edge rusher because right now the only people on their depth chart, like they just lost Melvin Ingram, but they have Mike Dana. uh, Frank Clark is getting older. uh, And then other guys that that are not even worth mentioning. And that is why I'm going to go with George Karlaftis from Purdue. I think that is a slam dunk. Um, He did only have, let me, wait, I got stats one second. Bear with me. Andrew, you should feel insulted. He picked him over your guy from Minnesota. Boy, uh, uh, I, I understand it. I understand it. Uh, yes, uh, he had seven and a half, seven and a half, half sacks in 2019, uh, two sacks slash uh, two sacks in 2020, then four and a half sacks in 2021. But for what people are saying that like he definitely has like the highest, um, definitely has like the highest ceiling because like he didn't even start playing football like way later because like he was born in Greece. He was born in Greece, so like now he seems he, he's kind of like I would say like I don't like comparing, but like the Greg Rousseau of this draft because like he has like the highest ceiling out of all the edge rushers, hundred percent. It may take him a couple years, but he actually could reach like that Daniel Hunter Hunter level. And uh, the Chiefs really haven't had any like great edge rushers since they brought in Frank Clark and all that. D Ford from when he had when he when he exploded for sacks. So I think this is a slam dunk pick for them. I think if um, Ojabo from Michigan didn't just tear his Achilles, I think he'd be he would have already been gone at this point, or someone traded up for him. But uh, I could see them taking him as well if they could just stay put and take him. I could see that being a situation too. Yeah, the the kills. Yeah, yeah. The truly an unfortunate. Uh, injury for him he would have been a slam dunk first rounder I mean we we talk so much about Aiden Hutchinson David Ajabo really made that defense tick at at uh Michigan so he he would be gone by now he's probably gonna end up being an early second uh I don't think he'll fall fall super far though I got him as my next pick (laughs) oh (laughs) you know what good for him good for him yeah he's he's gonna end up in Cincinnati (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not bad no and I, I like him like you said if he didn't get hurt uh 
we'd be talking about him like Hutchinson, I think. Or, yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, the Bengals need it. You know, the defense a little soft. So. Him with Hendrickson, that's a good pair. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they need it. I mean, their offense can hang with the best of them, but the defense has got to be able to stop somebody. So. Yeah. And they signed uh, Lyle Collins, so they don't have to go offensive line at 31. If they and didn't Kappa. sign him, yeah, and, and Kappa, people would have pitchforks and torches outside the facilities yelling, why didn't you draft an offensive lineman? You just hurt Joe Burrow metaphorically and quite literally going into the season. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a good – this is like a slam dunk pink pick for the Bengals yeah. here. All right. Detroit. Um, this is this is an interesting one because Matt Corral is on the board. But for anyone that knows me, every mock that I've released for the last few months, I've had the same pick for the Lions, whether it was before uh, the Rams had won the Super Bowl or after. So now they're at 32. I've had Sam Howell the entire way. Sam Howell from North Carolina. It makes too much sense. First, so the Lions have their coaching staff at the Senior Bowl. You know who's a late addition to the Lions squad? Sam Howell, who wasn't a senior. So that doesn't really make sense. And then you see him at the Senior Bowl. He wasn't the worst performing quarterback. He showed his physical tools. You know, he's obviously a smart guy. You saw his physicality as a runner, which hopefully we don't see at the next level. But he's not someone that starts. He's not someone that starts this year. He may not be someone that starts next year. But he's one of those guys where you put him on the bench and you know you have potential with him. With Matt Corral, you can probably get more starting time now. But that's not what Detroit needs. Detroit needs a starter, not this year, but next. Because they can get rid of Jared Goff, save a ton on the cap, and he is the definition of a mediocre quarterback. You know what doesn't win you football games? Mediocre quarterback. They can get Sam Howell to be a good product, get that offense better around him, keep improving the offense, you know, get another weapon outside of Amon Ra and TJ Hawkinson. Maybe DeAndre Swift gets better. Maybe they replace him because he's going to be on his fourth year, I believe, after this year. Or is this? Yeah, he'll be he'll be on his fourth because this is going to be his third. So he'll be nearing the end of his uh, rookie contract. If they can just make that place around him and they can get a good offensive scheme, hopefully not with Anthony Lynn, because uh, Anthony Lynn just ever since his last year with the Chargers, he's been bad. Uh, just get a good situation for him. He can thrive. That's the big thing with rookie quarterbacks. Good situation equals better chance of thriving. I'm going to go Sam Howell here, which may not be the most popular pick, but it's my pick. And let's be honest, the the goal for Detroit is let's at least win eight games a couple of times. And yeah. That, that's I mean, they, they know they don't have a chance. I mean, <laughs> it's Detroit. They're the Chicago Cubs of the NFL. Yeah, that's a really good comparison. I mean, Jim Brown was their Sammy Sosa. <laughs> Except Jim Brown wasn't on uh, PEDs, to our knowledge. That's another conspiracy. <laughs> Actually, um, another thing about another QB, um, Desmond Ritter has been really rising on many boards. I actually want to hear your opinion on him. Okay. Desmond Ritter is my opposite of a draft crush. I don't like him because you know what? He has the technique. He has the footwork. He's mobile. But one thing a quarterback can't be is that inaccurate. And I understand, you know who else was inaccurate coming out of college? Josh Allen. But he's not Josh Allen. He doesn't have Josh Allen's physical tools. He seems kind of frantic at times, which is ironic because that Cincinnati team was so composed, especially getting to the college football playoff. I just don't like him at the next level. Now, do I think he can be a really high-level backup? Yes. Can I? Th is he a low-level starter? Possibly. But he's not someone I'm taking in the first round, putting him on a five-year contract, expecting him to lead my team when he doesn't really have everything that I would like out of a quarterback. He's not someone that I can develop into a star. He is what he is. All right. All right. So any, any trades you see, I know you could do the no trade thing, but was there any trades that you would see for ha uh, happening in those, the, the bottom half of that draft? Um, I would say, 
uh, I know you brought up New England could trade back. That's definitely a possibility. I would say the biggest one is Pittsburgh moving up. I really think that they're going to move up from Malik Willis. However much they have to do, they should do. Because, once again, Pittsburgh fans should not be left with Mitchell Trubisky in Kevin Colbert's final year as the GM. I think Green Bay is always that team that's like, I think all but one year, Gutekinds has made a move up in the first round. And I believe that year was last year. If he loves Chris Olave or if Aaron Rodgers loves Chris Olave and, you know, he gets past the Saints at 16, call the Chargers. They most likely won't pick him. And you want to avoid him going to Philadelphia if they don't take him at 15 and they don't take a receiver at 15. So Green Bay could move up. Uh, Tennessee could possibly move down. Like, say... I really think they need to go interior offensive line. Say all the interior offensive line is gone like we did for Green, Linderbaum, and Johnson. They could move down, possibly. I think Tampa could move up for a tackle. Like, say, a guy like Penning fell. Uh, which, by the way, in the last like week, I've gone from loving Trevor Penning to really not liking him. So, a bit of a character switch on my part. But, I don't know. I think he's in that second closer to the third tier than he is to that first tier that a lot of people have been talking about with the, you know, the Charles Cross and the Ike Aquinas and the Evan Neals. But yeah, the Tampa trading down, I don't see Kansas city moving one of their picks unless they move 29 down. I don't think they move up at all. Like say a team in the second round, like say, say Matt Corral does fall. Seattle could easily jump up to 29. Seattle would move up to 29 and have him, Andrew Locke and Geno Smith. That's a quarterback room I did not think I'd ever say. But you know what? It could happen. Uh, I, I don't see Cincinnati moving up, though. I don't see Cincinnati moving up. And the only way Detroit moves up is if, say, like Tennessee takes a quarterback because they're not super happy with Tannehill or, say, by some weird happenings that Arizona trades Kyler Murray and they take a quarterback in 23. That's not going to happen, but I'm just going to put it in the universe – if it's a possibility, it's plausible. Yeah, awesome. So, Andrew, honest opinion. How did these three idiots from Buffalo do in this mock draft? Um, it, This was good. I would say the only pick I was not a fan of uh, was Bernard Ryman to Tampa. The only reason I say that is because going into his rookie year, he will be a 25-year-old developmental tackle. So putting a 25-year-old on a five-year contract, that isn't a sure thing. I don't love the value in the first round. If you bank on his potential and you love his traits, you love his size, I, you know what? The front offices are going to love the player and they're going to take the player. I just don't care for the value because I also don't care for him as a development player i would rather wait and get somebody that's more of a a tackle that can play now like i like abe lucas out of washington state he's turning 24 going into the year but he's more ready right now i i love my minnesota bias is coming out i love daniel falele he's six eight 400 pounds of going to stuff the run he's going to be good in some type of a running offense so that probably doesn't fit tampa but uh, I would take him. And then even if you looked a little bit later, uh, you may find some value. But yeah, Ryman, probably the only pick. I like the Burks pick uh, just because we don't know about A.J. Brown, but that would still be a good addition for Ryan Tannehill because anything that makes him look better. Uh, uh, I'm going on a tangent. I apologize. But anything no, that no, makes no, 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 this is what we're here for. <laughs> anything that makes a – mediocre slash good quarterback look better is the best possible thing. Like, I, I don't know if I said this last week, uh, Kirk cousins needs, uh, more weapons. He has Justin Jefferson. He has Adam Thielen. He has Dalvin cook, make him look better. One, uh, one thing I've been looking at this week, would it be legal to have Justin Jefferson and Jameson Williams on the same offense? No, oh, don't talk about it. No. Uh, we don't <laughs> look, I'm a Packers fan. I don't want to have to defend that. But that would be freaking sick. Just don't put that in the universe, okay? Just with Thielen. I, uh, I, they would be cutting Thielen in this oh, okay. uh, after this year. In in this because Thielen's contract is going to be way too much if they want to pay Justin Jefferson what he's going to want yeah. most likely midway next year. 
he'll be starting to look for that contract. So, There's actually yeah. a question I got. Um, do you think that there's kind of like a lost in translation when it, when it not just talking about like how good the players are, but like their age, because just to put an example out there, Devonte Wyatt, he's been really, you know, he was on that Georgia line right next to Jordan Davis. People are like been talking him up, but he's 24 years old. Yeah. And it's I, like, that's, that's kind of like, why would you even do that? Cause like within four years, he's gonna be 28. And that by honestly, yeah. at that point, his career is almost over. Like I know that. And then there's Kenny Clark who came in the league at, freaking 19 and now he's like five years and and a proven nfl vet so like i just feel like they just don't talk about it like plus kenny pickett's age i mean i'm not taking away from the player at all but like they really need to take consider consideration that they're just not talking about it do you think there's like oh there's 100 percent validity to that i mean another player that's projected top 10 to a lot of people is jermaine johnson he's gonna be 24 going into his rookie year but i think the biggest factor when it comes to a player that is older is development is that a player that you need to develop for a year or two? Or is that someone you can snap, put him in? It, Jermaine Johnson is a guy that you can put him in right now. Kenny Pickett's a guy that's going to start day one, most likely. Uh, we talked about Ryman. He is probably going to start, but he probably shouldn't. He's not ready. And then you said Devontae Wyatt. Devontae Wyatt can start right now. I mean, I have him as the best defensive tackle in this class. If he's ready to play right now, age is not as much of a worry. If he isn't ready to play right now, that's when I say there's a bit of cause for concern. Yeah. Andrew, one last question uh, from me. Um, could I just DM you during the draft for emotional support? <laughs> you know what? I I will – actually, my DMs are always open. Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> I, I will also be – uh, yeah, I will be needing that emotional support too because I, I remember I was doing a – a live stream with a buddy of mine during the 2020 draft. I bet you know how that went. Um, I broke my desk. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I I was like, yes, we traded up. It's going to be Patrick Queen. Our linebacker problems are solved. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> to make you feel better, Patrick Queen sucks. Yeah, but Patrick Queen plays. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you know what? He's got a valid point. That's actually very valid. Patrick Queen. If we drafted Patrick Queen, we don't sign Devondre Campbell. Campbell was an All Pro. He's an All Pro. He just got his money. I actually got to see him uh, two weeks ago. Really? Yeah, he was at the Minnesota's open practice. Oh, that's cool. Really cool. So yeah, it was fun. But yeah, uh, if if they draft a quarterback and (laughs) oh brother, that's Meme. Like I, I don't know why I always feel like social media is at its best when Green Bay does something stupid. Oh yeah, it really like, is. Gabe, what did I send you that one day? Oh, Sammy Watkins. Oh, I mean, to be fair, that contract is really, really yeah. easy for the team. It's like, yeah, if they cut him before training camp, it's three hundred seventy-five k against the cap. No one cares. But he's gonna have a he great week one. He can have a week one. All right, right. Well, everyone will pick him up and guard be. And then yep. be pissed off that he doesn't do shit the rest of the year. DFS value pick, Sammy Watkins, week one. Whoever <laughs> the Packers play, it's going to be against – they play Minnesota. Oh, my gosh. I'm so scared of Patrick Peterson. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. That's amazing. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us these last two weeks. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, your, your knowledge is definitely better than the three doofuses from Buffalo. <laughs> that's for sure. You guys uh, don't give yourselves enough credit. <laughs> oh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put that on yeah. my resume. Yeah, thank you again. Um, really appreciate it. Ho- hopefully we you know collaborate again in the future. Of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate y'all having me. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, good luck to Buffalo in the draft. Don't make the same mistake my team did two years ago. <laughs> We're getting Carson I mean, strong. <laughs> You know what? Carson Strong would not be a bad backup. If you got him in the fourth round somehow, uh, which won't happen, I would love to see Josh Allen and Carson Strong in the same quarterback room. But, I mean, uh, if y'all drafted a quarterback with the first round pick, that might, no, 100% worse than the Packers. Oh, that would make Twitter explode. (laughs) They would probably have to retire. Like, literally, Twitter would explode. The city would be on fire, and not even for a good reason. (laughs) Yeah, well, with how cold it's been, I don't know how easy it would be to start a fire. 
True. It, it's been – we had snow two days ago in Minnesota, and it's Literally. like – it's oh, yeah. mid-April. Like, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, I'm over it. So. The seasons have shifted. Winter's yeah, they go, they go from winter to summer. It was like 70 oh, last week, and then it snowed two days after. It's like, do you know what spring is? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think here for this upcoming Sunday in the forecast, it's like 74 with snow showers, and I'm like, wait, hang on. <laughs> Earth glitched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are now Bills Mafia's therapists and weathermen. Yeah, an absolute upgrade. All right, Doug, wrap us up, bun. Let's go. All right, and remember, and of course, for your podcast, remember to follow and subscribe um, to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, going on Electric Avenue, um, go, being in the war room to draft um, uh, Jerome Ford from Cincinnati. Um, anywhere they can get your premier Bills content. You forgot the white Bronco. Yeah, and the white Bronco. I gotta mix. I gotta mix it up. Make no, sure. that one's that one's a uh... classic. Yeah, yeah. And All you know, right. got, make sure anyone listening, make sure you follow Andrew there. Uh, his Twitter handle's right there for all your uh, your draft needs and beyond. And again, thank you. Thank you so much thank for you. having me. Thanks no so problem, much, Andrew. All right, go Bills. Peace out, tailbreakers. <laughs>